Greetings, friends, and welcome to another ministry of the Victory Hour here on YouTube. My name is Jim Gallagher. I'm the pastor at Clavel Assembly in Forfter, Rhode Island. And uh, welcome to our YouTube channel. You want to contact me? Info at ClavelAssembly.com. That's my email. And you can write to me, the Victory Hour, P.O. Box 222, Forfter, Rhode Island, 02825. Or you can address it to Clavel Assembly, same address. P.O. Box 222, Fourth of Rhode Island, 02825. So I'm, I'm taking a, just a very, very brief break from our series on the apostles taught that Jesus would return in the lifetime of that first generation, in the first century. And just to answer a question here about Christ's eternal body and our eternal body, because someone asked a question about that, and I think, you know, they needed some explanation. So I'm going to take the time to do that now. Then we're going to get right back after this. We're going to go right back to our series. And we just got one little small leg to do. And that's the book of Revelation. Because John in the book of Revelation teaches distinctly and undeniably that Christ would return in the lifetime of the people then living in the first century. Just like every other text we've looked at. You can't ignore these texts. You can't say, well, I want to believe these other texts over here and reject the ones you're bringing forth. I'm sorry, that's not Christianity. You've got to be able to expound upon the verses I'm bringing to you and believe those as well. You can't say, I'm choosing to believe these passages, but not those passages. That means there's a problem. Houston, there's a problem. I want to believe all the Scripture. Does it mean I can put every piece together? I don't know of any theologian that can do that in any system. Because the Word of God is, well, it's the Word of God. And it is deep. It is powerful. It is beyond the fullness of man's complete comprehension. Paul said, we see through a glass darkly. I don't think that's pretty, I don't think that's too difficult to understand how that could be. But what we're teaching about what the New Testament says about the timing of his coming, though I know nobody knows the day or the hour, but as to the general time frame, that's predicted time and time and time again. I'm just trying to show you that. But right now we're talking about the resurrection. And I brought you to uh, last time John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2, where John writes, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, he's writing this uh, early 60s to mid-60s A.D. Now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. When he appears at his parousia coming. It does, we don't know what he looks like now. It does not yet appear what we shall be. We know we'll be like him as he is now, but we don't know what he's like now. That's what John's saying. Let me read it again. I didn't even finish the sentence. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be in eternity, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, presently. And that's why we don't know what we will be like. We know we'll be like he is now, but we haven't seen him in his glorified estate. Well, think about that. <laughs> think about that. That has ramifications. That has ramifications. And so... We know that John is saying in the mid-60s A.D. to his first century audience, in eternity we're going to be like him as he is now. But it does not yet appear to us what we will be like. But we know what we'll be like when we see him because we're going to be like him as he is now. And that tells us that John and none of the brethren knew the, the glorified body that Jesus had. They had not seen that. 
which requires necessarily that Jesus' appearances to them in the 40 days on earth before his ascension, after his resurrection. He was not in his glorified body. And I gave you some examples of that. Mary saw him in the garden. And she didn't recognize him. She just assumed he was the gardener. Some guy tending the garden. And she said, do you know where they laid, laid my Lord? And, and of course, Jesus said to uh, her, Mary. And I don't know if it was the tone of his voice or the way he said it. Maybe her eyes were filled with tears. And she looked, and it was Jesus, Rabboni. She thought he was the gardener. That's not Jesus in his glorified, eternal, resurrected body. That's Jesus in his resurrected body while still on earth. Because in his resurrection on earth, he was resurrected in his literal, material, mortal body that they crucified on the cross. In the selfsame body, he was raised from the dead, just like was the case with all the other resurrections in the New Testament. They were raised physically and bodily with their mortal bodies. Jesus was raised with his mortal, fleshly, flesh and bone body. Not his eternal body that he would receive when he ascended into heaven. Flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. He would receive that spiritual, everlasting body in his glorified estate, the kind we will have one day if you believe 1 John 3, 2. He, will receive, he would receive that in his ascension back to the heavenly Father in heaven and then be in his glorified estate. So Mary thought he was the gardener. Nothing special. And then we looked, we, we considered the two in the road to Emmaus. Now, I know Jesus held their eyes, but the two in the road to Emmaus, they didn't know who he was. They just thought he was some guy. He was, that was not Jesus in his glorified, spiritual, eternal body. That was Jesus in his resurrected mortal body. We looked at where Jesus went in to his disciples in his post-resurrection, pre-ascension meetings with them. And he went in amongst them. And he ate bread. And he dined with them. And they thought they saw a spirit. Why did they think they saw a spirit? Because there was something glowing and magical about him? No. Because he walked through a closed door. And so that's what they thought. But they just thought he just looked like a flesh and blood human being. And then he showed the wounds to his disciples. And remember, Thomas very famously was doubting. And how can I believe except I see him and see those wounds. I can put my finger in the wound of his hand and thrust it in his side. And Jesus came back when, when uh, Thomas was there. And he showed him the wounds in his hands. And he says, thrust, thrust your hand in my side. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And we emphasized last time that presentation of Jesus in his resurrected body to Thomas and to the others was not Jesus in his glorified spiritual body. It wasn't. We know that we are going to be like Jesus is when he's in his glorified spiritual body. John says, we don't know what we'll be like. But when he comes, we'll see him as he is, and then we'll know. Because John's saying in 1 John 3, 2, we don't know what Jesus looks like in his glorified estate. But when we're resurrected, and go to be with him in eternity, we're going to have the same kind of body that he has. Not that we'll be equal with him, but we'll have a similar body the way he has, a spiritual glorified body. It's quite obvious from 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2 that John did not know what Jesus looked like 
in his resurrected, glorified body. Yet John had seen Jesus in his post-resurrection body for those 40 days on earth, which only goes to show that post-resurrection body of Jesus is not the same body that he would have in eternity in his glorified estate, which is the kind that we will have, if you believe 1 John 3, 2. I know I keep repeating myself, trying to hammer this home, because people are going to try and fight against the plain and obvious truth that I'm saying here, which is as plain as the nose in your face. But it contradicts popular orthodox teaching about the resurrection. You know, orthodox, he says, well, every resurrection in the New Testament was a resurrection with a physical, mortal, flesh and blood body. And we're supposed to be raved just like Jesus. So therefore, in our resurrection bodies for eternity, we have fleshly, mortal bodies, but they're fleshly and mortal, but no, not mortal, but they're fleshly. They're flesh and blood bodies, but or, or at least flesh and bone or flesh and blood, but they're going to be designed somehow for eternity. No, no, no. Our eternal bodies are not going to have the old wounds and defects of our mortal bodies on earth. Jesus showed Thomas his hands with the wounds. Now, when you're in heaven, you're going to show, show someone the scar from your appendicitis? Come on. If, if you were born with a cleft lip, is that still going to be there? If you were born blind, are you going to be blind? If you were born with a disfigurement on your face that they couldn't really do much with and it burdened you your whole life, is that what you're going to have in eternity? No. That's not what the Bible says. We have not been told the truth. I think these men, you know, they, they just basically said in history, well, we're supposed to be resurrected like Jesus and we're going to be like him. And so, therefore, Jesus was raised with a mortal body. I, not, well, a, 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 his regular, plain, flesh and blood body. Yes, but it's designed for eternity. No, his flesh and blood body is not designed for eternity. Oh, I'll go back and do this again. And then we got to move on with our argument here. I'm kind of rehearsing things. In 1 Corinthians 15, we're told this. All flesh, this is starting at verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. They're different. The ones on earth are different from the ones in heaven. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial, the earthly, is another. Different kind of bodies. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. He's not talking about the resurrection of Lazarus or anybody else that was resurrected in the New Testament, because they were resurrected with mortal bodies only to die again. In the eschatological resurrection, that's no. They're not resurrected to die again. They're resurrected to eternal life. It's something different. So they say, look, we got all the proof. And every Easter, they're going through all the resurrections of the New Testament, and they're all physical bodies. And so that's proof because we're going to be like him. And that's how Jesus' body was. And we're going to be like him. Wrong. All those resurrections were of a totally different category. Those were resurrections to mortality. All those people would die again. But in the eschatological resurrection, that's to eternal life. And we're going to be given a body like Jesus has now. And that post-resurrection, pre-ascension body of Christ was the kind of body we have now. But when he ascended to the Father, he received his glorified body. You know, even Christians, they say, well, we're going to be caught up and meet him in the air and in a rapture. So they, they, usually they'll say they're resurrected with your mortal flesh and blood body. But as you go up, it morphs into an, a spiritual eternal body. Well, 
Am I really saying anything different? Except Jesus stated when in his resurrection, he didn't immediately go to heaven. He was hanging around earth for about 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven. See the difference. So every Easter, you can go through all the passages about all the people that were resurrected and how they were flesh and blood bodies. So therefore, that's the kind of body we have in heaven. It doesn't make sense. It contradicts God's word. Jesus was resurrected with all his wounds. That's not him in his glorified body. And in Luke chapter 24, how are we doing in time? Um, should I do this? Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 39. He's showing himself to his disciples. He says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones. As ye see me have. This is Jesus in the same body they crucified him in. You and I, in our eternal estate, when we go to be with the Lord forever in his actual presence, in that other paradigm which we don't exist in now, <laughs> we're not going to have these bodies. Maybe we'll, they'll bear a similarity, but they're going to be perfected spiritual bodies. Now, he says, it's me. It's, it's I myself, the one they crucified. Handle me. I mean, see the wounds. That's not Jesus in his glorified body. You see the point? You want to see Jesus in his glorified body? Because we do have some pictures of it. They say, well, wait a minute now. He had to be in his glorified body. He went through that closed door, and they thought they saw a spirit because he did the miraculous. How could he do that if he's in his flesh and blood uh, mortal body? The fact that he was walking through closed doors shows you that Jesus was in his glorified body. No, it doesn't. No, 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 no. When Jesus was in his mortal flesh and blood he could be crucified and killed body. He was a real man that could die. When he was in his mortal body on earth, he walked on water. Well, what kind of mortal can walk on water? Well, you and I can't walk on water, but Peter did. He was in a flesh and blood body. Unless the Lord gave him some sort of special body just to walk on the water. No! Jesus was in his flesh and blood body. It's amazing, isn't it? It really is amazing. Jesus in his flesh and blood body. As a mortal who would in the future be crucified and have wounds and die. Jesus in his mortal body gave sight to the blind. He caused the deaf to hear. The lepers to be cleansed. And the dead to rise. That's not proof he wasn't in his mortal body. And there, there's one instance where he just magically escaped from the uh, crowd and all of a sudden he's in a different place. How did he do that? He was in his mortal body. He did it by the power of God that was resident in him because of the presence of God, yet he was in a body like ours that we have now. Do you want to see Jesus in his glorified body? A little picture of it, a little glimpse of it. Let's go. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. John's vision. We are we here? John sees Jesus in his glorified state. John's not seeing Jesus on the road to Emmaus here. Nope. 
or in the garden with Mary. No. John is seeing Jesus, and he's writing this in the mid-60s A.D., not 90-some A.D., in the mid-60s A.D., And he's seeing Jesus, because and then at that point, Jesus is in his glorified body. And John describes what he sees. Uh, first, uh, uh, Revelation 1, starting at verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches or assemblies which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. In the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So there was some sort of bodily figure, like we're used to, to some degree. Oh, but it's much different as we keep going. His head and his hairs were white like wool. as white as snow. You think that's the way Jesus looked when he was 30 years old? No? Well, maybe he's aged in heaven. Whatever. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. You ever hear, you're walking through the woods, you're on a hiking trail, and all of a sudden you hear, you say, whoa, there's a river over there. It sounds like it's raging. And then you want to hurry up and find it. Well, that's what Jesus' voice sounded like. The raging of many waters. His feet were like undefined brass. His hair was white as snow. His eyes a flame of fire. His voice, the sound of many waters. Verse 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword but this is a little unusual and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength was as strong and as powerful as the sun itself his countenance that's not what Mary saw in the garden is it That's not what the two saw on the road to Emmaus. Is it? That's not what Thomas saw when he was invited to take his finger and put it in the hole in Jesus' hand. Or to take his hand and thrust it in his side. The wounds had not healed. Because this is a very different Jesus. No, it's the exact same Jesus, except now he's in his glorified, eternal, spiritual body. The kind, according to 1 John 3, 2, we will one day have. So to say that, well, Jesus walked through walls, he had to be in his glorified spiritual body, that proves nothing of the sort. Jesus always performed miracles in his mortal body. So the fact that he walked through the door that day revealed to them that he still walked in the power of the Father, just like he was on earth. This crucifixion had not diminished him at all. But he had those wounds and it was him. It's I, it's me. See my wound. You know, go to Matthew 17. Matthew 17.
in verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, and his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. Well, that's a little bit like in Revelation. Yet that's right. You see, when the apostles saw Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, he was transfigured into something that he wasn't then in his mortal fleshly body as all the disciples know it. They were going to get a little window, a tiny window, not a full picture, but they're going to get a little heads-up window of a little bit what like he is like in his glory. Just a prophetic shadowy picture through this vision on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. See? Just like John said. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. Oh, boy. And of course, we have the rest of the story and uh, what transpired there. And then uh, Moses and Elias left, and then things went back to normal. And Jesus was in his regular mortal body again. And he says, tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. This was a little portrait of Christ in his glory that he gave to those disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration. You've got to see that Jesus in his glorified spiritual body There's a body that is very different from that mortal body he suffered and died in and that he was literally resurrected in to prove that it was him and that as a man he was resurrected from the dead. So you men also can one day be resurrected from the dead at my coming, but I will resurrect you because they're not going to spend 40 days on earth like Jesus. He, they, Those believers would be resurrected from Sheol or Hades to go to be with the Lord in eternity in glorified spiritual bodies, the kind Jesus has now. So we go back. Ooh, my time. My time, 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 time. Always fighting time. We go back to 1 John 3, 2. And John says, Beloved, now, now are we the sons of God. Does that mean they now have glorified bodies like Jesus? No. They've been given eternal life, but they still have mortal bodies. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. That tells the whole story. John saw the resurrected Christ on earth, and yet John says, it doth not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear at his second coming, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We'll know what we'll be like then when we see him in his glorified body. That's John admitting he's never seen Jesus in his glorified body. See that? And that's the body we will receive. They're spiritual bodies. They're not spirits. I know God is a spirit. But Jesus was given a spiritual body, and we're given one like him. It's a spiritual body. You say, well, what's a spiritual body? I don't know. It isn't like this one. There may be some similarities, but it's very, very, very different. Read Revelation 1 and see the kind Jesus had. It, I, I wouldn't even venture a guess. And I got no problem with it. So I'm ready to believe what Jesus said about resurrection. Are you? Look, my time's up. I do have to go. Let me thank you for watching. Invite your friends, Jim Gallagher, reminding you in the words of our blessed Lord and Savior, ye shall know the truth. The truth, if you believe it, shall make you free.